Good morning everyone. I'm just um, going to try and show you how you can start to develop a retrieve in your dog. Okay, so you've probably seen a few videos where Bliss is actually kind of retrieving and, and coming back, but she, she's done that pretty much um, from the start. So I've been quite lucky really in that there's only certain times when she will go away and sort of lay down with an item, which is kind of natural because when we start playing with a dog like this, good girl, we are tapping into the prey drive. So when you think about recall and, and retrieve, so this ties into both, but retrieves in particular, you're tapping into what's known as the, the predatory motor pattern, um, stalk, chase, capture, kill, dissect, consume. I was on a, a sort of webinar yesterday where we were talking about that possess should somewhere fit in there. So obviously if you throw something, they will chase it, they will capture it. Some dogs will shred it to pieces, um, that's dissect it and kill it, and, and then consume would come from that. But also some dogs will hold on to the item once it's there and just keep away from you. And the reason they sort of play keep away is, is because of the fear of losing the object. If you think about what happens with a lot of dogs, you know, you've, you've thrown a ball, they've, they've got it, they keep away from you, you chase around, chase around, chase around. You then take it off them. Um, and sometimes you might throw it again, but a lot of times you might end the session. So the fear of losing the object becomes vital, but for them as well, even that you may throw it again, the repetitions aren't fast enough to build in that reinforcement mechanism that says, yeah, okay, if I give it up, I get to chase again. And that's really what we're trying to, to tap into there. So a couple of things. I've got a couple of items here to do retrieval. So I've got um, two items the same of, of each. So I've got two little small combos and two small pullers. Other things that you can use as well, I'm using my hallway here, but you can use a long line so that if she does start to play keep away, she can't run away from you, you've got a little bit more control as you go through. So obviously that's about a, an eight foot line and then I've got a 12 foot line as well. So as you can see, Bliss has just taken the ball and decided to go and <laughs> run off upstairs. Pop, pop, Bliss. And oh, good girl. It's actually just got the ball in the box. And she's now just laid down at the bottom of the stairs. So you can see that this is kind of natural, but she's come back. Good girl. And I'm going to throw. She can chase after it. Yes, good girl. And then I can throw it again. Yes, good girl. See how she's looking for it to go immediately. Now what I can try and do there is <clears throat> keep her focused on me. So Bliss, sit. Bliss. Good girl, good girl, yes, what a good girl. Get it. Yes, good girl, yes. And I'm looking for it to bring it back to hand, so obviously she's pretty good at doing this right now. And then eventually I will do this in ever decreasing, um, ever increasing stimuli area. So we will eventually go to a park, but I'll have a long line. So let's say I've got a good girl, an eight foot and a 12 foot line, but I've also got 30 feet lines and I've also got 50 feet lines so that I can have that control and I can reward often. Okay, because this is the key is not withholding, but rewarding. You ready, Bliss? Get it. What a good girl, yes, good girl. Now, if you want to add a little bit of stay and then sort of retrieve from a dead item, obviously you can see how she's kind of sat now. So I can just gently hold the collar and I'm gonna just throw that. Ready? Okay, go. What a good girl, what a good girl. So again, you can see I'm just adding a few layers now I could have the lead on, I could hold her in my arms, I could go and place the item and then come back. So all those things will enable her to sort of understand what I want to happen. Good girl, Liz. Thank you. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Get it! Yay, what a good girl. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the item out because it's important to do multiple items so it doesn't just get sort of obsessed to the ball. So. What a good girl. What a good girl. Oh, this pop up. Good girl. So again, no pressure if she's going to wander off and go and do something else. I'm going to try, and I say try because I'm guilty of it too, that I will sometimes nag a little bit, but I'm conscious I don't want to do that. I want her to just enjoy the games from now. She's a young girl, she's she's not even 14 weeks yet, so you know we can we can add control later but you can already see that I'm adding a little bit of control in that I wanted to bring it back to me wanted to try and get it into my hand rather than just drop it or stay short of me so I wanted to come back Liz good girl you ready get it what a good girl Oops. see how she, she's interested in the tennis ball so we can see that we've got a preference of toy. Good girl. So we know we've got a preference of toy. Ready? Get it. That doesn't mean that we can't use that or use a different one. Pop, pop. Good girl. But also when we look at reward mechanisms, we can look at the value in an item. So at the moment, you know, the ball we know is going to be quite high value, so we can use that in more tough environments for recall. But obviously the more that we play with other items as well, they will they will gain extra value. Pop up! So she's just laid down with um, both of them now, so she's got two. So I'm just going to try and tempt her back now. Pop up! Yes, good girl, good girl. So you can see, not nagging her pace, and just trying to get her to come back. She will lay down sometimes. She may not come back every time, but this is early stages. Hopefully that makes sense. So here I've got a nice hallway where I can just kind of contain it so she can't run past me. Um, I'm gonna, I've been doing this in the back garden as well. I'm gonna start doing it on the front. And then once she's sort of finished all her course of, of um, vaccinations, then, we'll be going out into more distracting environments with a longer line and trying it there, just to try and generalize it. Because the key thing is, practicing in the living room, practicing in your hallway, practicing in your back garden, you've got to take it on the road with you so that it gets generalized. So, there you go, have a go. This. You kind of like the ball, don't you? Good girl. Ready? Get it. Good girl. Yes, good girl. You've missed it, girl. That one. Get it. Good girl. So you see now she's starting to lie down. So that's probably a cue for me to say that, you know, it's, it's time to end the session because if she's laying down, it could be a sign that she's more tired. But before you probably saw she was coming back quite consistent. So just end the session. There's no need to sort of keep pressing. But if she was on the long line, you could. And this isn't about yanking or whatever. But this would be slowly just taking up some of that pressure and just giving that gentle encouragement to come to you. Yes, good girl. Good girl. So then she can, you know, Come back finally so you can say I've not gone to her and that's kind of crucial because if I go to her I could start to chase I could start to guard it by encouraging her to me she's making the choice to come to me she's making the choice to give it up and then I can kind of just let her have it and let her kind of just go off and do that but, oh good girl good girl and if I want to finish the session what I can do is I can just throw some food on the floor and then pick everything up and then just decide that that's going to be the end of our session um, and a very just nice little short um, retrieve session. So have a go, got any questions, pop them in the comments below and um, enjoy.